You are welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. You are welcome in this place. Let's study the word of God together this morning. To crucify the flesh. <clears throat> Magnify the Holy Spirit. And glorify God. Come on and walk with me on this journey as we study, get ready to study the word of God together. Magnify the Holy Spirit. And glorify God. Good morning, Sister Suburban. Good morning. On this journey. Study the word of God together. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Minister. <laughs> Sister. Suburban Copeland. Hallelujah. You are welcome in this place. We give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise for another day. This is the day that he has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hopefully we'll have some people, more people to come on. Hallelujah. But if not, we're going to go on. Hallelujah. Where two or three are gathered together. He's in the midst. Amen. <laughs> Magnify the Holy Spirit. And glorify God. And glorify God. The Holy Spirit and glorify God. As we study the Word of God together, Amen. Let's study the Word of God together. Hallelujah! I believe in studying the Word of God. Study the show thyself approve a workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We thank God for another day. Hallelujah. I didn't get a chance to put out what I usually put out, but we are here. The ones that are here are the ones that are supposed to be here. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. To God be the glory. What a mighty God. We serve, what a mighty God we serve. We know that angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God. We serve, we know that angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve, oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. We know that angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God 
we serve. You know that angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. We serve a mighty God. Prince of Peace, Abba Father, what a mighty God we serve. If you know he's a mighty God, he's shown himself mighty in your life, you could, you should have been singing that song with me. What a mighty God I serve. Take it personally. What a mighty God I serve because he's been good to you. He's, I know he's been good to me. He's a mighty God. There is no one like him. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Just want to make sure you can hear me good. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We serve a mighty God, Prince of Peace, Abba Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm just grateful to God for today. Oh, hallelujah. We went to that home going service yesterday. Sister Suburban and I both, we were there to show our respects and be a part of that service for Brother Eddie Fields. We have been praying for him continuously and he hung on. <laughs> the Lord he has a time for all of us. There's a time to be born and there's a time to leave this earth. But the Bible said to be absent from the body, you, you go right into the presence of the Lord if you're a believer. So I know without a shadow of a doubt from the last time I spoke with him that he was ready. He was born again. He actually told me, he said, Pastor Charlene, it's about that time, I believe. Because what they told me is starting to happen. And you know, I just, I thank God for Brother Eddie. He was very helpful in the ministry. And we just thank God. And we know that we all have to meet that day. And we just pray that we're ready. So we have to keep a repentant heart. You know, repentance is a change of attitude, a change of changing directions, uh, making a choice. And, you know, we always should ask God to help us in our weakness. Hallelujah. Help us in our weakness. Hallelujah. We give him all the glory, all the praise because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to study your word with your people. <laughs> we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. But this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. No matter what we go through, no matter what it looks like, Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Father, take complete control of every entity of me, Father. Lead God and order my steps as only you can. In the name of Jesus, less of Pastor Charlene and more of you, God. Holy Spirit, I ask you for a fresh anointing with power to go out through the airways and teach this word that you so graciously given me in the name of Jesus. Continue to comfort Brother Eddie's Fields family, the, the Fields family and the Pearson's family in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know you are the comforter. You are the Prince of Peace. So, Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Lead God and order my steps. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. To God be the glory. Go ahead and turn your Bibles to John chapter John, uh, verse 1. Hallelujah. John chapter 1. Starting at verse 29, John chapter 1 is our scripture reference, but we will be moving around this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Yes. The title of my message this morning, God can use anyone he chooses. God can use anyone he chooses. I don't know if you've read your Bible before, but he, the Bible said at one time he used the ass of a donkey to get the attention, hallelujah, of the people in the word of God. He used the ass of a donkey. So the title of my message, God can use anyone he chooses. The question I would like you to ponder this morning, are you willing, ask yourself, am I willing to be used by God? God can use anyone he chooses. Because in the Bible, he said he used the ass of a donkey. So we have to ask ourselves, am I willing to, to be used by God. And as I previously stated, the scripture reference chapter John, that's in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The fourth chapter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Hallelujah. Chapter one, starting at verse 29. As some may know, there are many who were chosen by God over 2,000 years ago. So as you, as you look for that scripture, I'm just going to ask you for a tentative ear for a moment. As some may know, there are many who were chosen by God over 2,000 years ago, as well as in this generation. We will be looking at eight individuals in the Bible who were used by God, but their faith were challenged. I tell you, on this journey with God, your faith will be challenged. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Even my faith is challenged. And as if you've been following me for a while, and, and Sister Bourbon, you have, hallelujah. I always say those things, I use an example, those things that come down the pipe, so to speak, in our lives, that causes our faith to be challenged. And we also know that things can happen that challenge our faith. In other words, questions arise and causes us to wrestle with what we believe. Wrestling with your faith isn't a sign of weakness. So, so, so don't be hard on yourself. It's not a sign of, of weakness, but it's evidence of your humanity. You're human. You're in the flesh. The men and women in the Bible show us this. We should get to a place on this journey with God, beloved, that we are not surprised when our faith is challenged to a wrestling match. You know, the Bible said we, the, the, the flesh wars against the spirit. Turn to book of Romans and you'll see it. That's always a battle. So our faith will be challenged. The Bible tells us to fight the good faith, fight the good fight of faith. Winning a good faith wrestling match can even make us stronger. Mm -hmm. We get, begin to mature. Those things that come in our lives and uh, experiences in life causes us to mature in the things of God. We have a choice to give up and turn back. The Bible said a person that turns back is like a dog turning unto his vomit. I have a dog. I know how that is. Spit up something and be ready to lick it up. So that's when a person leaves Christ. They've known Christ and they leave Christ. It's like a dog turning unto his vomit. So, so, so the Bible tells us to fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. And it can make us stronger. Now let's take a look at the biblical characters that God used. Uh-huh. I said that anybody can be used, whatever, whoever God chooses, amen? So John, he testifies about Jesus. Starting at verse 29 of chapter 1 of John. And this is what it says. It said, the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, this is what he said. He said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Beloved, verse 1, as we have just read, John spoke uh, uh, of talks about the Lamb of God who takes away sin. 
My sisters and brothers, every morning and evening, evening, back then, a lamb was sacrificed in the temple. Which symbolized, symbolizes that the sins of the people were forgiven. And if we've been saved a long time, we've heard that back then, in those days, they had to sacrifice an animal for their sins. But now we have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We can go to the Father and we can commune directly with him. Uh huh. For the believer. Isaiah 53 verse 7 puts it like prophesied. Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah, God's servant, will be led to the slaughter like the lamb. And this is what he says. He used Isaiah. He was a prophet and he prophesied. This is what he said. He said he was treated harshly, but endured it humbly. He never said a word. Pastor Keat is guilty. Sometimes I have to say a word. Most of the time I'm quiet when someone comes against me. But sometimes I, I, I say, God, I, I feel guilty for saying something. But sometimes you have to speak up. But here it said, the Isaiah's prophesying. He said he was treated harshly and endured it uh, humbly. He never said a word. Like a lamb about to be slaughtered. Can you imagine? That lamb, like, oh, like a sheep about to be sheared, he never said a word. My sisters and brothers, to pay the penalty for sin, a life had to be given and blood shed in the Old Testament. It was blood, hallelujah, of an animal, but with the coming of Jesus, God's son. Mm -hmm. I, I hope you're listening. God chose to provide the sacrifice himself. He loved us so much that God, he sent his only begotten son. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. To be a sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, the sins of the world were removed when Jesus died as the perfect sacrifice. You should say amen or type amen to that. So this is why we can... Ask Jesus to forgive us when we sin. Hmm. And he does because he paid the price for our sin by his death. So if we, uh, so if we confess our sin to him and ask for his forgiveness, we will receive it. I don't know about you, but I'm happy about it. I can stop right there and say, Lord, I thank you and shout and close it down because he's a good God. He's a faithful God. He's a forgiving God. He's a merciful God. He said he wished that none should perish, that all shall have eternal life. Second Corinthians 5 verse 7 makes us aware that it, that it is important to live by faith. Mm -hmm. For we live by faith, not by sight. That's what it says. We live, the believer, live by faith. We've never seen God. We accept him by faith. The Holy Spirit drew us to the altar and he changed our lives. So we live by faith, not by sight. Paul so graciously tells us that in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. Verse 30 of John 1 uh -huh, goes on to say this. It said, this is the one I meant when I said, this is John talking to him. A man who comes after me has to surpass me because he was before me. Beloved, although John the Baptist was a well-known preacher who attracted large crowds, he was content for Jesus to take the higher place. He knew what his position was. This is true humility. Mm-hmm. He knew he was supposed to be the forerunner of Jesus. The basis for greatness in preaching, teaching, or any other work we do for Christ. We do everything. I get here every morning for Christ. It's not about Pastor Key. He gets all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Hallelujah. Beloved, when you are content to do what God wants you to do and let Jesus Christ be honored for it, God will do great things through you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
The last verses we'll look at in 1 John, I mean John, the Gospel of John, 31 through 34 says this, I myself did not know him, and I'm reading from the Amplified, so it might say a little, sound a little different. He said, I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave his testimony. How many know if you overcome by your testimony? This is what John says in uh, 32, verse 32. I saw the spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. I come by to tell you, my sisters, I see sisters on here, that God, well, he comes to baptize with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives you the power to do what he's called you to do. You can't do it in your own strength. I can't do it in my own strength. But the Holy Spirit that gives power will allow you to put your flesh under subjection and lead, be, and lead and guide you to do what he's called you to do. To do what I am called to do. Do we dot every I and cross every T? No. But if we're consistent and persistent in the things of God, it will happen. Because he said his word will not return to his void, but it will accomplish what it set out to accomplish. So if you want him to deliver you from anything or whatever the case may be, he will do it. But it's up to us. We have to ask ourselves, do I really want to be delivered from this thing? Help me, Lord, in my weakness. I need you. If we really, He knows. He knows us. He knows all things. Hallelujah. I know many times he's shown me me. Hallelujah. Verse 31 through 34 makes us aware that John the Baptist and Jesus were related. You say, Pastor, how? Keep walking with me. According to Luke 1 verse 36. Uh, but I'm going to start reading at verse uh, 34. I'm going to go up. Luke 1 verse 34 down to verse 36. And this is what it says. Mary said to the angel, you know, when the Holy Spirit came to Mary, how would this be since I am a virgin and I have no intimacy with any man? Mm -hmm. Then the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you like a cloud. For that reason, the holy, meaning pure, sinless, a child shall be called the son of God. And listen, even your relative, this is how they are, are related. Even your re relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And she who ha was called barren is now in her sixth month. And she was carrying the forerunner, which was, G which was John the Baptist. So, beloved, this is evident that they were relatives, but John still needed confirmation of Jesus' identity as the Messiah. So, as Jesus' baptism, uh, at Jesus' baptism, God gave a sign to show him that Jesus truly had been, had been sent from God. God would give us a sign. Hallelujah. If we allow to spend time, if we just spend time with it, the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us as well. Do you believe it? Type amen or say amen. Say with me again. God can use anyone he chooses. Furthermore, furthermore, when John found himself in jail, he questioned if Jesus was really the Messiah. Sometimes that Things that come down in our life, hallelujah, we sometimes wrestle with our faith. And John knew that he was the forerunner. 
but he still wrestled with his faith. Faith. He found himself in jail and he began to question, was Jesus really the Messiah? And John sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he was the one. Hallelujah. And this is found. Go ahead and turn that with me. And Matthews 11 verse 2. Hallelujah. Go ahead and turn there. Matthews chapter 11. Hallelujah. When Jesus sent his disciples to Jesus to find out if he was really the one because he was obedient and he had done what God said. Hallelujah. And they began to wrestle. And it's found in Matthews 11, starting at verse 2. And this is what it says. When John the Baptist heard in prison about the things that Christ was doing, he sent some of his disciples to him. Tell us. This is what his disciples said. Tell us, they asked Jesus, are you the one John said was going to come? Or should we expect someone else? Jesus answered. He said, go back and tell John what you are hearing and seeing. The blind can see, the lame can walk. Those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases are made clean. The deaf hear, the dead are brought back to life, and the good news is preached to the poor. How happy are those who have no doubt about me. Verse 7, while John's disciples were leaving, Jesus spoke about him to the crowds. He, this is what he said. He said, when you went out, uh, to John in the desert. What did you expect to see? A blade of grass uh, bending in the wind. What did you go out to see? A man dressed up in fancy clothes. People who dress like that live in palaces. Tell me, what did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, indeed. But you saw much more than a prophet. For John is the one of whom the scripture says. God said, I will send my messenger ahead of you to open the way for you. I assure you that John the Baptist is greater than anyone who has ever lived. But the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. From the time John preached his message until this very day, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violent attacks. And valid men tried to seize it, mean kill it. Hallelujah. Matthew is making us aware, beloved, in this verse that entering God's kingdom takes courage, unwavering faith, determination, and endurance because of the growing opposition level at his followers. In any case, Jesus knew that John would be validly beheaded and it he is, he is, and was always pointing out that opposition was and will build against his chosen one. I ask you the question again. Are you willing to be used by God? Hallelujah. The second biblical character that God used was Simon Peter. Hallelujah. One of the original 12 disciples of Jesus. Peter uh, was known and is known for his boldness. Hallelujah. It was Peter who was commended by Jesus for receiving the revelation from the Father that Jesus was the Son of the living God. Matthew 16, verse 15 through 17. The easy to read version. Hallelujah. It's evident of this. And this is what it reads. Then Jesus said to his followers, and who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus answered, you are blessed, Simon, son of Jonah. No one taught you that. My father in heaven showed you who I am. But when Jesus was arrested, as we know, Peter wrestled, bet wrestled between faith and fear. He denied knowing Jesus with cursing and swearing. You said, what, Pastor? You know, you've read your Bible. Mark 14, turn that with me. Mark 14, we're going to start at verse 16 through 72. Mark 14, 
where it lets us know that Peter wrestled, wrestled between faith and fear. Mark 14, Matthew, the second uh, book in the New Testament. And I'm reading from the New King James Version, starting at verse 66. Mark 14, starting at verse 66. <clears throat> now, as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And when she saw Peter warming her, himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 68, but Jesus denied it, saying, I neither know or understand what you are saying. And he went out on, on the porch and a rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again and began to say to those who stood by, this was one of them, but he denied it again. And a little later, those who stood by said to Peter again, surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean, but your speech shows it. I mean, and your speech shows it. Then he began to curse and swear. I do not know this man of whom you speak. I, a second time, the rooster crowed. Then Peter called to the mind. Then Peter called, called to mind the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you would deny me three times. And when he thought about it, he wept. So Peter struggled between faith and fear. Beloved, Peter had been so certain of his faith before that. Mm. However, Jesus knew he really wasn't. He really wasn't. How, be, how many know that Jesus knows everything? Jesus had pre predicted Peter's denial and prayed for Peter's faith to not uh, fail. And it didn't. Did you hear what I said? He prayed, Jesus prayed for him that his faith would not fail, and it didn't. Peter's faith brought him back to Jesus, who not only reconciled him, but asked him to feed a sheep. Say with me again, beloved, God can use anyone he chooses. So let me keep my mouth shut. Let me keep my mouth shut off of God's people. The third biblical character that God used is Thomas. Being a disciple of Jesus doesn't automatically make us a faith giant, as we, we have, we've we been made aware of the two we just uh, uh, observed in the word of God. Thomas became known as what? The doubting Thomas, because he wrestled with the truth that Jesus rose from the dead. But his wrestling with faith was as human as the labeling of it. Amen. As some may know, Thomas was not the only disciple to wrestle with the truth of the resurrection. All the disciples wrestled with believing. Remember when Mary and the other woman came and told them Jesus was alive. And this is found in Luke 24 verse 10 through 11. Which reads as thus: It said, "Now they were, uh, now they were Mary Magdalene and Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Herod's Herod's steward, and Mary, the mother of James, also the other woman with them, were telling these things to the apostle. But their report seemed to them like idle talk and nonsense. They they said these women nonsense. They they talking nonsense." And they would not believe them. As we know, uh, people who hear about the resurrection for the first time may need time before they can comprehend this amazing story. Like the disciples, they may pass through four stages of belief. Mm -hmm. The first stage, they might think, they might think it is, uh, it's just wishful thinking. Wish, wishful, written. Help me, Holy Ghost, wishful thinking, perhaps a fairy tale and impossible to believe. Second, like Peter, they may check out the facts, but still be puzzled about what happened. And third, it, it is only when they encounter Jesus personally will they be able to accept the fact of the resurrection. 
Then as they commit themselves to Jesus and devote their lives to serving him, they will begin to fully understand the reality of his presence with them. Hallelujah. Be persistent. The Bible tells us that the race is not given to the strong. Uh, woo, hallelujah. Or the swift, but the one, the swift strong, but the one that endures to the end. Amen. Beloved, it is important to point out the grace of God for those who wrestle God's unmerited favor. Oh, hallelujah. The, the 11 disciples didn't believe until Jesus appeared to them. And then he appeared again just for Thomas. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. The fourth biblical character that God used was the father of a sick boy. Here is a father with a son who, who's mute and has seizures. He takes his son to the disciples of Jesus to be healed and comes away with no different. He takes him to the disciples, but the child comes away no different. Wrestling with his faith, with his faith, he brings his son to Jesus, asking him, if, asking him if Jesus can help. Jesus points uh, to his faith, but knowing he's wrestling with his faith, the father responds honestly. Say, I must be honest with God, cause he already know. He cries for help to win his faith wrestling match with these words. In Mark 9, verse 24, and this is what he says. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe. Help my unbelief. Hallelujah. The man was honest with God. And Jesus brought the victory. My sisters and my brothers, Jesus will help us win our wrestling matches by his grace, his unmerited favor. favor. Hallelujah. If we just be honest, he will allow us to ponder some things within ourselves that will bring honesty. He knows all things. But he wants us to see it, hallelujah, and the man here that wanted his child to be healed, he spoke honestly. He said, I believe, help my unbelief, the fifth biblical character God used. God it was Moses, hallelujah, one of the most prominent figures in the Bible, endured many faith wrestling matches. He struggled to believe he could deliver his people from Egypt. After murdering an Egyptian and being rejected by his Hebrew brothers. After this, he ran into the wilderness until the time when the Lord appeared to him in the burning bush. But when God called him to do what he ran away from, he wrestled with his faith. With questions like, what if they don't believe me or listen to me, God? Moses struggled with God's response, claiming he couldn't do public speaking. Frustrated with Moses. The Lord sometimes gets frustrated with us. The Lord allowed him to have his brother Aaron to help him. Exodus 4, verse 10 through 16. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. It's evident of this. It says that Moses said to the Lord, Please, Lord, I am not a man of words, meaning eloquent, meaning fluent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes the mute or the deaf? Are the sin or the blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now then go, and I, even I will be with your mouth and will teach you what you shall say. But he said, please, Lord, send the message of rescue to Israel by someone else, whomever else you will choose. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled and burn against Moses. He said, is there not your brother Aaron, 
the Levite, and know that he speaks fluently. Also, he is coming out to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be overjoyed. You must speak to him and put the words in his mouth. I, even I, will be with your mouth and with his mouth. And I will teach you what you are to do. Then it goes on in verse 16. He said, moreover, he shall speak for you to the people. He will act as a mouthpiece for you. And you will be as God to him. Telling him what I say to you. Beloved, it's evident that every wrestling match that Moses went through was met with grace of God. The sixth biblical character used by God was Abraham. Abraham, the father of many nations, meaning he is the father of our faith. Beloved, many may be intimidated by Abraham's faith until they have learned how much he wrestled with it and how the wrestling didn't stop him from receiving from God. The Bible tells us that because he believed God, he was made righteous. Sounds instant and simple, doesn't it? Yet, beloved, I come out to tell you this morning, it took God telling Abraham the promise seven times before Abraham was fully convinced. The sixth time God promised Abraham fell face down and laughed when he promised him something. He fell face down and laughed because he told him that his wife Sarah will have a son and to name him Isaac which means laughter, hallelujah. Genesis 17, verse 1 through 5, and verse 15 through 19 is evident of this. And it reads as follows. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk habitually before me with integrity, knowing that you are always in my presence and be blameless and complete in obedience to me. I will establish my covenant, meaning everlasting promise between me uh, uh, and you. And I will multiply you exceedingly through your descendants. Then Abraham fell on his face in worship and God spoke with him saying, as for me, Behold, my covenant is with you, and as a result, you shall be the father of many nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, exalted father, but your name shall be Abraham, father of many, of, of many nations. For I will make you father, he said, your name will be father of a multitude. For I will make you the father of many nations. Now verse 15 through 19 goes on to say this. Then God said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you should not call her name Sarah, my princess. But her name will be Sarah, meaning princess. I will bless her. And indeed, I will also give you a son by her. Yes, I will bless her. And she be, shall be mo the mother of nations, kings of peoples who, who will, peoples will come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born who is a hunt to a man who is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, uh, 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 years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael, my firstborn, might live before you. But God said, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son. Indeed, and you shall name him Isaac, meaning laughter. And you know Jesus did that because Abraham laughed. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. Beloved, God choose whom who 
he wants to use. And this should give us a great hope. Amen. He chooses. Someone else might count you out. Your faith might, faith might wrestle. But God, he's a man that he cannot lie. He won't change like people will change. He loves us. When he speaks to you, it's going to happen. The seventh biblical character God chose, chose was the wife of Abraham, as we know. As we know, she went through her own wrestling match, her wrestling with faith, while Abraham was going through his. And as we know, she was barren for many years and passed off as Abraham's sister two times to different kings. Eleven years passed after God's promise for a child. And her wrestling led her to a bad plan that ended in the birth of Ishmael. Beloved, if you do not know, Ishmael was the first son of Abraham. He was born to Abraham by his slave, Hagar. Sarah, Abraham's wife, believed that since she was old and bearing God's promise of children to Abraham could only be fulfilled through Hagar. Genesis chapter 16. It, it says this, now Sarah, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said to Abraham, behold, now the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarah. So after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. And she, he went into Hagar. And she conceived, and when she saw that she had conceived, she took with contempt on her mistress. Now she told her husband to do it. He, he obeys and does it. And Sarah said to Abram, may the wrong done to me be on you. See, so when we do wrong, after we do it, because of our wrestling faith, as we're talking about this morning, and God can use anybody, because the human element, they even let the human element rise up. He, and then she comes back because she became jealous. That's a strong word. It's, it'll get you in, in deep trouble. He said, may the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your to, to your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, she took on me uh, 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 with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarah, behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarah dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarah. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for mul so they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You should call him na his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. So he tells Hagar to go back and submit to her mistress. Because she fled because she was was a uh, harsh to her. She was harsh to her, but she made a decision because she wrestled with her faith. And the Lord came to her and told her that she was going to get pregnant. They didn't believe it at first. So 13 years after Ishmael was born, God declared his promise of a son. Three more times for a total of seven. After the seventh time, Sarah laughed, unable to fathom having a child at her age. But nothing is too hard for God. And we know she gave birth to a child. And they called him Isaac. Amen? Last, the last biblical character, Ishmael, was the Hagar son. Isaac was Abraham and Sarah's son that they had in their old age. The last biblical character of is Jesus Christ. You say, what? Keep walking with me. Christ knew who he was and how he was going to die. 
John 8, verse 28. The new, I'm reading from the New International Version. It's evident of this. And it says, so Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he and that I do not, I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, he fell at humanity under intense pressure. Jesus Christ fell under human he met, I mean, under humanity because of intense pressure. He asked if there was another way. He knew there wasn't, and he stuck with what he knew and fulfilled his mission of laying down his life for us. My sisters and brothers, Jesus won everything for us in his wrestling match. He declared, what did he declare? Who knows? What did he declare? He wrestled with going, but he obeyed the Father. He declared that it is finished. He paid the price for you and I. He died and he rose again. So I asked you the question, because on this journey with him, we're going to be tested and tried. And we got to make some tough choices. Because see, this flesh enjoys what it does, what it wants to do, what it wants to say, how it wants to act. And God, but, but the Bible said in the book of Romans, he said, I beseech you, chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we, you, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. You know why he said it's our reasonable service? But first we have to come to him. We have to accept him by faith. And when we accept him, sometime on this journey, this flesh want to do what it want to do, and we wrestle. But, you know, we have to get to a place and we grow, we grow. That's what the Bible means when it said we go from glory to glory to glory. Don't give up. The race is not given to the strong or the swift, but the one that endures to the end. I tell you, it has not been easy for me. I haven't dotted every I and crossed every T. I've made mistakes. The enemy don't play fair. He knows what we like. But if we stay consistent and persistent in the things of God, Hallelujah. That's why we have to keep our mouth shut off of people. We all have made mistakes. None of us. We just read about the eight of them. Hallelujah. They did what they wanted to do. Don't let anyone come in your path and tell you, you ain't, you ain't, I've been told that. You ain't called by God. And honey, that person got whooped all during the night. Before I could get up, I had a text. Please forgive me for what I said. See, let God fight your battle. Don't worry about people. Because what's for you is for you. Hallelujah. The Lord knows your heart. And know that he died for you. He rose for you on the third day. Hallelujah. He said it is finished. I asked you the question. Are you, do, are you determined? Well, did I say it like that? But let me say it this way. Are you, do you know that, you use, that you're supposed to be used by God? Do you have an unction in your spirit? But people in your family, friends saying, you ain't used by God. You don't supposed to be used by God because you don't even communicate right. You don't even quote the scripture like you should. How many you know it, it's a process? Just stay habitual with God. Make it a habit to serve him and be persistent and consistent in the things of God. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you don't know him today, I want to give you the best invitation that you will ever get in your life. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. But look up. Look to the hills with come of your help. Romans 10, 9 and 10. He said, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It's a gift from him. We can't earn it. We can't buy it. We just accept it by faith. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. After listening to this message and learning that the ones that God chose, they made, they wrestled with their faith. So Lord, I want to become a man or woman of faith, trusting in you and believing in you. So Lord Jesus, I believe that you sent your only begotten son to die on the cross for me. 
And on the third day, he rose again. And Lord, help my unbelief. The things that I struggle with, God, because of perhaps my past or what I've gone through. Help me, Lord. As you told this father that struggled with his child being sick, having seizures, and he struggled with his faith. But he said, help my, um, I believe, but help my unbelief. Oh, God, help us to come humbly to the throne of grace, to you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome, for the ones that repeated that after me, welcome into the family of God. Now get connected to a Bible-believing ministry and begin to grow in the things of God. Now, I'm not going to tell you uh, a tale that it's going to be easy because testing and trying it could still comes to me. I'm tested. I'm tried. I'm tempted. But God, I thank God for his mercy and his grace. And I tell him that every day. And I keep a repentant heart towards him, asking him to help me in my weakness, to lead and guide me. Amen. I want to encourage you. If you're looking for a church home, hey, you invited to continue here for right now, but we're looking for a place now. We have, we were talking about it yesterday after we came out of that funeral. And I tell you, I'm looking forward to it. Amen. To get to see you face to face. If you've been on this journey a while and the pressures of life has gotten the best of you, the Bible tells us in Acts 3 verse 19, it says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And he promised that a time of refreshing would come from the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent. Lord, I thank you for this word on today. Help me in my weakness, God. Lord, I repent. I change my attitude my way of doing things, and I turn to you, Father. Help me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I promise you, and I don't make too many promises, he will help you. He will help you. Amen. To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Larry Wal Walston, welcome. Welcome. Amen. Darren, Darren, thank you for being on this morning. Good to see you on. Sister Patricia, Sister Suburban, hallelujah. And I pray that Sister Suburban, you, we will start seeing her more as she be, go through uh, training and, and go through different things. And then I can sit back and listen. You know, it's a process, amen. And you got to remember, she's not past the key. So she don't hurt. God uses her, all of us different. So her style is going to be different than mine, but we believe God. We trust God. I don't choose people. God chooses you. Amen. When the pastor came to ordain me in 2015, he said that. He said, uh, God knew this day was going to occur. It's going to happen. So sometimes we might think a person is not called because they might not sound like the other path. No, they're not going to sound like me, but we're going to pray for one another and continue to pray my strength in the Lord. We had a very trying week. You know, we lost a, a brother who was struggling with cancer. Lung, I mean, uh, first, when I was having my surgery, he was having lung cancer. And I didn't know it. So they removed one of his lungs. And then they thought they got all the cancer and it had traveled to his liver. And, you know, liver, the liver purifies the entire body. Therefore, you know, they had him on morphine. You know, I would go see him and Sister Bourbon would, you know, talk to him and, and Sister Pastor Young. We would all pray and, you know, and talk to him. But, you know, God, he knows. But I tell you, uh, when we went in that room and, and he always liked me to sing, I love you, Lord. And I sung it at the funeral yesterday. Thank God. And, um, you know, when he heard that song, not at the funeral, this was at the, his his uh, family house, uh, he tried to open his eyes. So I know he, they say the last thing to go is the hearing. And uh, I know he heard us. And while we were standing there, he took his last breath. It was another lady at the other, ladies at the other church. We're all in there singing and praying. And he took his last breath. And we just continued to pray for the Fields family that God would strengthen them in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. To God be the glory. And you know I will be here Tuesday night, 730, ready to study the word of God. Brother Walton, I've been praying for you. And I pray that all is well uh, with your situation. I thank God for you, getting to know you. And I pray that all is well. And I know that God is going to take care of you. That, you know, weeping may endure for a night, the Bible says, but joy cometh in the morning. So we're going to go through sometime, but God is faithful and he's just, and I'm glad to see you back on. Okay, so we'll be here Tuesday night. If this message is a blessing to you, if this ministry is a blessing to you, and you want to sow into this ministry and you have cash app, you can sow to dollar sign wholeness. 1965 dollar sign wholeness 1965 and help us get back in that building we are looking at a building we actually one of the ladies and i are going to look at one i'm i'm believing god we're going to have a church you know i'm just thanking god for it in advance i've been praying but we have been looking until then we've been looking at this place i got a call recently donovan I might be saying it wrong, but it's on East Wendover and it's the event center. And they left me a message saying, you know, if we want to come back and look at it for our church. So continue to pray our strength in the Lord. And I pray that I see you all there in the building. Come and visit so we can interact and, and fellowship. I'm getting the ca I started on the calendar uh, for next, so this next year, this year. So continue to pray, pray, pray our strength in the Lord. Continue to pray for me and my family, my son to marry Spencer. We've been praying for him. There's some things going on, but we continue to pray that God will show mercy and will bring him through some things and myself as well. So I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you back here on Tuesday night at 7.30, ready to study the Word of God. And if you want to get ahead with the message, we are in Matthews chapter 21. Amen? To God be the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And remember, crucify the flesh, magnify the Holy Spirit, and glorify God. The Holy Spirit gives you the strength and the power that you need. Be blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah.